everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners and welcome to part 4 on super tuning your NEQ6 or EQ6 mounts. On this part I'm going to take you more closely in depth with the Rowan belt modification. Now there is a tuning company that's released this product that's out for the Astro market for some time. Unfortunately, it's not that well known. There is a few good retailers out there. Rover Valley Optics is definitely one good company, Astro company, that sells this uh, rowing belt modification. Now, this belt modification is only available for all Skywatcher mounts. So, so it covers the HEQ5 and EQ6 and any EQ6 mounts. The other ones are just gear driven mounts. So this is what this belt modification is, is available for those two particular mounts. Again, there is a website. If you click on the Rowan website, you can check out directly on their page. You can order the belt modification as well. So if you want to visit their websites, please do. Uh, and please order the belt modification. I strongly advise if you are going to undertake this project is to purchase the special tools and the equipment. And again, Rowan have got a good website there that shows you the tools you're going to need to undertake it. The good thing about the website is there's also an online manual. So when you purchase your belt modification, which are really good and they are very clear to understand. So you do get the manuals in the box when you first purchase this product. So in part four, I'm going to take you through the stages of carrying out this belt modification for your mount. And I'm going to share my experiences. Now there are a few things and few knacks I've, I've come across, which I will highlight further on in the video. I'm going to share my experiences and take you through important stages because if you do it wrong and you fit the belt wrong, you can seriously damage your mount. I'm not here to try and scare you from not doing this project, but I strongly advise to follow this video. Again, it's up to your discretion if you want to undertake it. Again, if you make a mistake, I'm not responsible for your actions. However, I'm just sharing my experiences as I go through the video. To give you a good idea to what it consists. So again, if if you're liking my videos, please hit the like button, and again, please subscribe onto my channel and activate the notifications. Again, activating the notifications will activate, will keep you in tuned with the next video projects coming soon. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to undertake this belt modification and take you through the stages so please enjoy and let's do this so here's the tools you're going to require to do your rowing belt modification first off you're going to require some loctite ideally some thread lock a small flat point screwdriver a small needle file or small file longer allen key set sizes from 5mm to 3mm to 2.5mm and 2mm size allen keys then you're going to require small pliers and small long nose pliers as described in part one you're going to require the geo optic grease pack as shown here type one and type two also you're going to require the rowan neq6 bearing removal tool a large flat point screwdriver and finally, the EQ6 in any EQ6 belt modification kit from Rowan Astronomy. So we get a decanation 
motor first. So we're going to work on this motor first using the two and a half Allen key supplied with rowing engineering belt modification and we just remove these screws here okay lift it out and you put you discard this to one side then get your two mil allen key and you'll see two screws there remove these screws and then what you're going to do the pinion gear itself on the motor is very tight so get yourself a flat point screwdriver and as you can see there I've angled it so that I'm going to lift it out like that so put it on the ground you're going to angle it and then lift towards you and it pops out like that it'll take some time these are already cracked off but that's how you remove the pinion gear so that's the the pinion gear removed from the electric motor so before we uh, put our mountain bracket onto this motor first off we need to use a needle file very fine file to, s to get rid of any burrs off the drive shaft so again just if there's any burrs just quickly file them off okay that's nice and clean we then get the NEQ6 decoration axis mountain bracket we're going to use the three mil Allen key. Remove the three screws. Now there'll be four screws that be loose. So you flip it round, and there you go. Pull that to one side. Remember how, it as went. you can see there, we're going to line up the shaft. Okay, so there's a flat piece there. So we slide the drive pulley along the flat edge of the motor. So we line it up like so. Okay, and we're going to tighten this up using the two mil. Okay, these only just nipped up. We're not over tighten it. Okay, they just placed in position. Okay, you'll see, you'll get to see why we haven't tight, over tightened these. Then we put a little bit of lock tight. Don't need a tiny bit. Don't need to put too much. Like so. Once we've got a tiny little bit of lock tight, we get a bracket with the screws line up the holes and then get our two and a half allen key tighten each of the screws okay so they've tightened up not over tightened just nipped up the lock tight will help to hold these screws so they don't work loose we're going to focus on this bracket now you've got the two rollers there I notice that these are made of a good quality plastic however one thing I'm not too happy about is plastic will is rubbing on the aluminium block so what we're going to do is remove these rollers using the two mil Allen key we're just going to crack these off that's one that's two what we're going to do is put a little bit of Loctite just a tiny bit in the holes so
Okay, just a tiny bit. If you put too much, just clean the rest with a rag. Okay, the Loctite will not set until the screws are in. I then get my Geo Optic grease, like so, and I'm just going to smear a bit of grease at the back of here. So we put a bit of grease on the thin side here, okay, only a, a film of grease, that's all you need to do. We put a bit of grease through the pin itself, and we're just going to pop that in, and then thread it. Use the 2mm Allen key and just tighten up. That's one pulley in. Do the same again to the other one. Then any excess grease we just clean out using a rag, just clean out the pulleys. We get our pulley bracket. And we're going to line up these holes here with these holes, like so. So before we put the three bolts onto this plate, the first we need to check is if we need to check the drive pulley is in line with the with these guide pulleys. As we haven't tightened up the the drive pulleys here, we just need to we're going to put the the belt over the drive pulley and we're just going to check see if the drive pulley is in line with the guide pulleys as you can see I'm slightly out but I just need to press this drive pulley a little bit down so to do that I have to take off this part slacken these allen keys okay and then push it down a bit and then put the plate in and then measure it up so as you can see there i've readjusted my pulley tighten up the allen key grub screws i put the plate in and as you can see there we're aligned i put my belt around the drive pulley and the guide pulley and as you can see now I'm lined up perfect and that's very crucial that you get that squared away so now my drive and my pulley wheels are properly aligned so now what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up the screws at the back so we're tightening up the screws we're not going to tighten up fully okay we're just gonna just nip it up slightly so so that's the bracket secured with my drive pulley and guide pulleys lined now up. we've got a right tension motor and bracket now I'm not gonna go through this again because it's exactly the same process as the decanation motor So there we go, we have our decoration axis lined up, all the bolts tightened up, same as the RA, all, right, all three bolts have tightened up. Both plates are aligned together as well, and all the drive pulleys and guide pulleys are now aligned. So you can't get confused between the two. One is bigger than the other, Declination is the smaller one and the RA axis motor drive is the bigger one with the bigger plate. So you can't get confused between the two. So in this part we're going to and assemble this Declination axis worm drive. So when you put it together the first thing you're going to do is you will not need this gear anymore. You're going to require this new gear and belt, tooth belt, like so. Placing the bearings. I've slackened these Allen 
grub screws, two mil grub screws. We're going to put the tooth belt and gear in the slot there. We're going to place the spindle through, feed it in, take note of the flat ends of the spindle and then we're going to feed it through like so. Pushing the gear like so. You then place the other bearing on this side. Like so. What you want to do is align this pulley, tighten the grub screw and with that gap there will provide you this one millimeter gap. It's very crucial that there should be a gap between the gear and the casing. If you don't follow it exactly where it states in the manual or the instructions, this gear wheel will start to rub onto the casing. So where that worm drive is, where that gap is, just there, you can adjust, tighten it up in line with that and you should be within the one millimeter gap. As you can see, it's a bit difficult to see. Okay, but you can just see that gap. See the gap there? Yeah, there is that gap there. So tighten up the grub screws and you should be good to go. Now we've got that pulley wheel and aligned with the shaft we're going to make sure your bear is in place there we'll put the end cap in and then what we're going to do is just tighten tighten this cap put it hand tight first and then using a special tool nip it up on the final clamp that's it, that's all you need to do, just nip it up like that. So now we've put the lock ring. So we're going to use the tool, screw it in hand tight first, all the way down to where we get no movement. So all the way down. So as you can see, you tighten it up using the, the special tool, you tighten it up all the way in and then back it off. Okay, what you try to do is making sure that this gear is free to rotate, it's a bit tight so we back it off a bit more. So you want it free to rotate but no lateral movement, so between uh, this gear. So then once that's adjusted, we put the end cap and we tighten this up. Placing the pins. Like so. And tighten this up like so. And that's it. So now we have our worm drive with no movement and it's free to rotate. Perfect. That is now a fully adjusted decanation axis worm drive. So again, the same procedure is exactly the same for the RA axis as well. So please follow this guide. I'm not going to cover the RA axis because it's exactly the same. So here we have it. We've got both our decanation and RA axis worm drives. The belt modification installed. The gear is adjusted. And then obviously there's no free play and all that. So now what we're going to do 
is we're going to put these and we're going to line them onto the mount head now for reasons for this it is very important now even though the book states you've got to have one at least one mil gap between the casing however this is true for the actual worm covers so the one thing I did notice is that the casing when you align when you put on the these worm covers on top of the casing believe it or not if you take a closer look in these pictures So as you can see in those pictures, you can clearly see the worm drive gear pulley is actually rubbing against the decination axis and the RA axis when both of these are installed. Even though that these are in lined, lined up, the, the teeth was actually rubbing against the casing. So this is how important it is. And it is quite easy to do. So to check this on your EQ mount, get the head itself and align these plates or bolt these covers onto your head. So even though you are perfectly aligned the, on the gears, you might not be on the casing. So you're going to put the bolts in first So just tighten these up Now don't over tighten these Just nip them up if something doesn't quite go in like this one here you can just see now that I'm not aligned and you can just see that this is not aligned right but if you can take a close look here at the back end there the gear is rubbing so that's what I mean about this even though it looks aligned but it's not I can't tighten all the bolts and it just appears that something is pushing it so don't force it in because this is supposed to fit flush and there should be nothing misaligned so even in the instruction manual it states to be one mil clearance what it tends to not let you know is the clearance is not just the worm cover but it's also the head itself and as you can see I'm going to have to grind or file this off on this casing to widen the gap so that the equatorial mount head and the casing for the decanation casing is aligned I'm also going to check the RA axis so we grab our RA axis and we're going to do the same for that so we put the case over like so so we line up the two halves like so and we're going to put in the bolts and again we're going to gradually just align these bolts but we're going to check again we're going to check the bottom now but I can't see it 
as such top tip use your mobile phone and take a quick snap and if the gear is still is touching the actual casing on the mount even though this cover all the way around appears to be aligned now I'm glad I checked this because if I didn't and they installed it this would have done a lot of damage to my modification so this is reason why I do these videos not only just to show you how to do it but also to show you a few hints and tips along the way to avoid accidents like this from happening so what I'm going to do is use a Dremel or a file and start fi filing down making this gap bigger so you know widen this out and prevent the worm drive gear rubbing against this casing however I've seen a few videos in the past and they all seem to fit you put the this part here put it onto the mount first and then put your your drives together and all that I think it's a lot easier to line up your belt modification as it is now as I just showed you I've just I basically just filed down as much as possible to open these slots so those slots are now filed down a lot bigger now and I put the re the main retainer for the taper roller in place just to protect uh, this part here I've removed one of the bushings here alright so I don't damage it while I'm working on this project so first off what we're going to do is place our RA axis bracket okay we've just split it apart okay there's our RA axis motor with the, the other bracket and what we're going to do is we're going to place it inside inside the casing flip it round like so uh, as you can see I'm going to line up the two holes so using a very long allen key which is going to be very handy to do this job we're going to line up the first RA axis bracket with the rollers facing down so the pulleys are facing down we get a 4mm long allen key and we're going to line up the holes as you see I'm just lining up this line up one of the allen bolts along these holes don't over tighten them just slightly loosen them a little bit then get the second allen bolt and line up the bottom one So the sort of loose, so what you're going to do is you're going to push the bracket flush like so. Hold it there, tighten. Tighten the second one. So now we've got both, both bolts t nipped up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the worm drive casing. I have adjusted my gear gap a little okay and the reasons for doing this process without the brass ring is I'm going to put the cover over like so now you can use tweezers to feed the belt through the hole and it needs to feed between the guide rollers okay the guide pulleys so you need to feed the tooth belt through here okay like so now you can use tweezers 
or you can use something like a nice small flat point screwdriver and just guide the tooth belt through okay and push it between the rollers like so so it should slide in then we're going to line up the case we're going to line it up nice and flush and we're going to put the four mil belt bolts okay the allen bolts and we're going to line this up using the five mil allen key we are not going to over tighten these we're not going to tighten these fully we're just going to nip them up okay okay we'll just line that up nice and flush we're going to flip around once they've lined up so we just get our tweezers uh, grab the belt and just put a bit of tension reasons for that is is to enable the belt to seat properly into the gear on the worm drive. Now what we're going to do is get our motor and we're going to place the motor, line it up like so. So basically we're going to slide it against the face, slide down and then slide as it sits in there you're going to slide across so as you just push it aside like that you can then then you should fill you line up the three holes as I push it along the side I can feel I've got the belt on the pulley now if you feel like you can't if you can't see the pulley top tip is you've rotated it round okay then look through this slot here on the decanation axis all right you should be able to see the pulley if it's not in line as you see there the pulley's not in line on the on the uh, motor so as you can see the pull is not lined up so we realign it again looking through the keyhole like so and you're just going to position the pulley as you see I've just positioned the pulley again I'm just lining it up Okay, and now I can, I'm on there now. So we're going to flip it on its side after the pulley is just now fed through. We're going to place the three mounting screws using the three mil Allen key. We'll line up the first one first. Then we get the second one, which is going to be a bit difficult because it's at the bottom. Then we get a last one which goes at the back of here. So we've got all three bolts lined up and then we're going to 
put a bit of tension, okay, push the motor, you put, you're using your finger, alright, and you're going to push, push the motor, alright, like so, to get a bit of tension. Then nip up the three bolts. Like so. So what we're trying to do is we're going to check see if the the electric motor pulley and the worm drive pulley is in line with the guide rollers and also we're checking see if the casing and the worm drive casing is not misaligned so to check our pulley system see if it's aligned properly top tip get yourself a mobile phone with a camera activate the camera and activate the permanent flash so in other words you've got your light constantly on what you're going to do is you're going to take a snapshot angle the position right down okay and you're going to take this shot once I've taken the shot I am going to check my picture I've just taken so I'm going to check my picture and see what I got uh, so I'm going to show you some images examples So as you can see, I wasn't quite aligned. So what we're going to do is you're going to take off the three bolts, take off the motor, and we're going to readjust. So as you can see, the worm gear is not quietly aligned up, and so is my motor. So we're going to take this out, and we're going to realign our pulleys. So we're going to take off the three screws. So we loosen the three bolts, take out the motor, we're going to leave this bracket in and we're going to remove the four bolts from here. Take off the worm drive cover and then what we're going to do, as you can see there, I need to push the gear further in a bit more and we're going to loosen these allen keys uh, these allen grub screws and we're going to move the gear that way and then this one again loosen these grub screws or uh, the actual motor gear push that down line it up tighten it up and then what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to refit the same process like I just showed you and again take a take a snapshot for your camera phone and then check uh, the actual pulley system what you're doing is you're checking the position again see if all these are perfectly aligned So after you've done the RA axis and we've lined up the the drive system, we now checked that the pull is now central and the gear wheel's not chafing on the casing and the belt is aligned between the guide rollers properly. You're going to do the same process again on the decanation axis. So you do that, you line it up and you do the same for the decanation axis so remember when you're using your brackets with the guide pulleys do not use the sky watcher longer bolts okay that usually clamp on the existing uh, brackets do not use them use the issued shorter bolts 
from the Ruin Belt mod. Again, please use the spring washers and existing washers in replace, okay, like so. So use the Rowan Belt shorter bolts and then using the, ex the original spring wa washer and washer and put them in line. I have installed the two brackets for the RA axis and detonation axis. So remove the retainer. I've just cleaned the space washer with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I've just cleaned this face here. There should be no dust, there should be no grit or grime between this part here. We then get the type 2 grease. So we've put a smear of grease type 2 put the washer over like so and just let it sit in there nice and easy we then get our, our type 1 green grease and we're going to coat the brass ring like so okay so we've coated the green grease around the gear ring we then put our type 1 grease just over the face here of the bearing only a film of grease will do flip it round and do the same as well just a, a smear of grease round here we get our worm drive apply a small bit of grease along this thread here. Careful not to get any grease on the tooth belt and just coat uh, this worm screw. We then get our brass gear and place it over the spindle like so. So now we've got our washer and our brass ring in place like so now we've got our casing for our worm drive we're going to put the cover over like before feeding the belt through and then Put the four bolts so we just we're only gonna nip these up because these are not over tight these are not tight ends okay we just cracked off slightly We're going to adjust the worm. So here you will have you have a grub screw here, and you have a grub screw here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the two mil Allen key, and we're going to adjust the worm drive. So as you can see there, these screws basically you're adjusting the mesh. So whatever you gotta do on this, whatever you gotta do when you tighten up these grooves, scrub screws, if you tighten this one up, you're gonna push the plate that way. If you adjust this one, again you gotta like whatever you adjust up and down, what you're trying to do is adjust uh, this plate up and down so that the worm drive is meshed in into the the gearing okay so that's what you're trying to do so as you tighten up this you more so need to tighten up that part as well and what you're trying to do is adjust the worm drive okay so you can't rotate the brass ring so again what I'm doing is I'm just just adjusting that one up okay I 
think I'm in there. So I'm, um, as you can see there, I am adjusted. Okay, like so. Once I'm adjusted, I like obviously check around the actual face, and I'll tighten up these screws. So, as you can see, my worm drive and brass ring are adjusted centrally and embedded. I've just tightened these up. Okay, these are all tight. Place the cap like so. That's it. That is now your RA axis brass ring installed. We're going to do the same way for the decanation axis. It's the same sort of process as I just showed you. Okay, that you need to install the internal bearing here first before you put the shaft, the brass ring, and the the worm drive and housing on top. So again, it's the same sort of process as before. Just please ensure that you tighten up all these bolts for your mounting bracket for your motor. And then once that's done, we're going to then we're going to install the decanation axis. Before you put the decanation axis onto the mount, it'd be a good idea to remove the brass stud and lock screw before you install the decanation axis. Also, put a light grease along uh, the actual PTFE washer so that's greased and I've got a smidgen of gre green grease on the side for the setting circle which we'll place over the top like so okay we don't need too much grease okay it's just enough to put a film of grease on the setting circle and we're now going to install this shaft onto the mount so don't forget to put the washer that goes on here, like so. Bit of grease, we're just going to line that up like that. Then you're going to line up your brass ring that's already greased, like so. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to adjust the washer inside so it's nice and central before you put the decanation axis in. Once the washer is aligned, you're going to do the same process, put in the worm drive housing, like so. So, right, I've just did the tension on these two tiny grub screws. I'm going to tighten up these bolts. Like so. Right, okay, now you can see I've got the washer lined up, okay, so it's not going to catch on the spindle, okay. Uh, I don't know about the, the free play just yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the decanation axis over and slide it in all the way down. Okay, that's home. I'm going to tilt it on its side and feed it through this other side. Okay, and then that's fit flush. Now, if you do struggle to try and tap this in, just keep spinning it and pushing down, it will come in. Okay, so as you can see there, that's all the way in there. So, we're going to put a bearing. I put the four screws into the counter. Sh Counterweight shaft, okay. 
We're going to put the bearing first. It's already greased. Remember it's a taper roller bearing, so the cones go in this way, downwards. So you line it up. Okay, like so. Then we get this part. And we're going to use this to screw down the taper roller. Okay, and then screw it all the way down. Pressing the bearing and the detonation shaft in place. Okay, so the bearing seats home. Once you get the right tension and all that, you can then tighten up the group screws. Just tighten it up, okay, bit end flow, then back it off slightly, okay, so then get your 2mm Allen key and then just tighten up the counterweight shaft group screws. Okay, don't worry about if there's any bit of play, okay, don't worry about that, we can adjust this decanation axis. To replace your decanation lock screw and compression washer, like so. So, replace your brass lockdown screws. Okay, just for time being, we're not going to adjust these yet, but uh, as you see, got these brass down lockdown screws in place. Now, just one top tip to let you know, I use a set of pliers to turn the worm shaft spindles on the flat hedge. However, using the 2mm hex bit or Allen key, if you adjust these two screws too tightly on each of the worm on the worm drive housings, you can't turn that spindle through your pliers. So what you do is if it's too tight, slacken the four bolts and then readjust the two screws. And at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is you've got to try and be able to adjust the or the actual worm drive and gearing so that you can turn the spindle through your with a set of pliers so I can turn that now as you can see there you might not be able to see that but you can see the belt moving as well so once you've got the correct tension you then tighten up the four bolts on the top and do the same for so the other So we adjusted the spindles and as you can see if you take a look on those belts I'm going to turn the spindle you see that starting to move now right so that's that belt drive can move freely and this one here yeah that can move freely too you don't want it too slack but you don't want it too tight so if you do get that problem again slacken the four bolts then readjust the tiny grip screws, get the correct tension and then tighten up the four bolts and then recheck. So what we're going to do is just carefully just put some tension using a screwdriver. You can use the issued tweezers but personally uh, you need longer tweezers just to just ensure that this belt is bedded in between the two pulleys, the tensioner pulleys and the uh, worm drive they're sort of embedded in now so we're going to line up our motors into the belt okay we're going to start off with detonation axis we're going to move the polar scope harness out of the way and line up the motor okay and what we're going to do is just going to slot it in and then we're going to put a bit of tension so we'll get a set of pliers Turn the detonation spindle. As I put tension there, I can I can feel the the belt moving now on the motor. 
So, right, so that's embedded in. So what we're going to do is now line up the three screws into the holes. Again, we're going to use a longer Allen key set, and this is going to make things just a tad easier. So what I found easy to use is use a set of long nose pliers, line the bolt and the washer, and gently lower it down. Okay. If you're good at uh, the old game operation, you'd be awesome at this. Then, once you've lined it up, get your long Allen key, and then you just carefully bolt it down like that. So as you can see, don't tighten them all the way down yet, but once you've got three, lot, three bolts lined up, which is here, here and here, they're not tightened yet, because what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of tension here. So we're going to put a bit of tension on the electric motor, pushing it down. So I'm pushing it down with my finger, and I'm just turning the spindle. Okay, I've got the drive there, so what I'm going to do now is tighten up the three bolts. whilst holding the pressure like so okay that's all three bolts tightened up as you see that's now fixed we're just going to do a ch quick check okay I can feel the electric motor is embedded with the belt. So line up the RA axis, hold it in, and then what we're going to do is push it down, okay, like so, and then check, see if we've got any drive. I guess not, so we'll try again. feel it now got the tension so check again yeah I've got the drive now so we're lining up the last bolt bit of precision uh, as you can see in there we go okay and then Once we've got three bolts, check the tension. Okay, I'm on there now. I can feel the electric motor drive, so we'll put the tension on the uh, electric motor. Okay, you don't want it too tight, so you just use your hands and then you just use time the last three bolts. Okay, and then there you go. We should be good to go. Yeah, we've got the drive. Now, as you can see now, the reason why I did it off the actual mount itself and did just the head alone is I find it easier to adjust the motors, tighten them up this way than it is to put it on the mount and then try to align these motors and then the bolts. So you can actually just have this mount head mounted straight onto the onto the the pier or the tripod however this is my method you don't have to do it also you don't have to uh, put the decanation axis right you can put this head in first onto the mount and then put the decanation last but i find it was easier for myself to do it this method because then I can get a good feeling of the actual mount, adjust the worm drive, uh, the bearings and all that, and put the motors in. I think it's a lot easier this way. The saving grace though, is long Allen keys like this help a, a great deal. So is the long nose pliers. When I line up the bolts, I can get to the thing, get to the holes quite quickly and turn them. 
Bear in mind, this is no easy job to try and line those three bolts on each of those motors. And it will take some time. So, have a little bit of patience. You will have to do several attempts. But the whole idea is just take your time. Once you've got the three bolts in, just the tension and check the drive, see if you're in there. Once you've done that, you should be good to go. So yeah, place the caps. Place the two caps, like so. So once you've lined them up, use the special tool and tighten them up. So we're at the final stages, we just finished the belt modification, as you can see there's a few precautions you need to undertake and a bit of advice, again please follow that video all right, if you are going to undertake this modification. Please look forward to part 5 where we're going to completely assemble the NEQ6 mount, put it all together and then we're going to show you a few hints and tips along the way. And again, sharing my experiences involved with this work so that if you do wish to undertake this yourself, at least you've got a good guide to follow up. These series of videos that at the end I will be testing this mount. So to prove to you guys and girls how to show you how it performs. Again, a lot of us do not like to invest in a lot of money because astronomy equipment is very expensive and people do not like to purchase things until they see uh, how the product performs. And again, I totally agree with you, there's not many videos out there that will show people how Astro Gear works and that's the main reason why in my videos I always demonstrate when I do a product review or I test something out, I like to show, give out evidence to people that this product works. So when the weather eventually clears up and cheers up and hopefully clear enough for me to start using this mount and I get to test its performance, show you guys and girls the improvements it's made. So if you like my videos hit the like button, please subscribe onto my channel. We're also available for Facebook group Astronomy for Beginners. Again, we'll, we've got a lot of good experienced astronomers and astrophotographers to help the beginners out and newcomers into astronomy. So please join that group. So, again, look forward to part five. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. And clear skies to you all.